I've been here four months and um, my uh, life began in Southwest Michigan. I was the son of an immigrant from Brazil and um, both of my parents were public school teachers who started their higher education journey at a community college uh, called Kellogg Community College. And that was their opportunity to take what I believe is the first and most important step in economic and social prosperity. I truly do believe, and I've said this publicly, that education is one of the most powerful forces for social and economic mobility. So um, my career path has <laughs> several different uh, steps in it. I, I was a pilot, I was a lawyer, um, and then I became involved in um, an aviation program at Western Michigan University. And what I was most interested there was it was an opportunity to bridge the gap between um, a 12th grader in high school and a career that was um, meaningful for that person. And being able to be in higher education to engage industry, not just um, the uh, high school education product below. So uh, I think that there's a, a great opportunity for administrators in higher education to bridge that gap, to be a li liaison between a high school and a career path. And I found that Henry Ford College was one place that actually thought that that was a place where a leader should sit. And so um, when Henry Ford College was looking for a new leader, I was looking for an area uh, that both valued education, but also wanted its leader to engage employers directly to make agreements so that students could come get an education as a means to a meaningful career. And I, I do think Southeast Michigan, and I do think Henry Ford College is at the cutting edge of that, which is why I'm so excited to be here and why I asked to be the leader. My father worked for Ford Motor Company. I knew the history of Henry Ford Community College as starting as a trade school, begun by Henry Ford himself and then morphing into something bigger. And the reputation when I was in college in the mid-70s was that it was an extended high school, quite frankly. People called it Hank High. So at that time, I understood the importance of the college. And back then, we really didn't have quite the understanding of what Henry Ford College could accomplish. And Brian Whiston was fascinated with applying for this job out of the blue, it wasn't in his wheelhouse, he, he came from a different background, but he was challenged by the fact that we were a P14 district and he wanted to make something happen because one board oversaw th the responsibilities of um, those tax dollars across the, the bridge. We already had dual enrollment, we already had um, the potential, but we weren't making the best of it. Brian Whiston opened the door, and at the time I thought he was crazy, <laughs> that he was ever going to offer free college for our students. So the college then became much more vigorous in, in our um, sight line of what we needed to have to offer to students. I think with the arrival of Dr. Cavaloon, uh, Mr. Cavaloon, our president, um, we are going to be once again return to what I remember for about 20 or 30 years here, and that's a very collegial, um, supportive uh, community of employees. The board is elected by the community, and, and whatever message they put out to the community is what spoke to them as to why they chose that board member. So I think we're a reflection of what the community is looking for in their um, vision of what our district ought to look like. Right now, you know, we've been 80 years of a joint board for a P14 community, and I don't think the, either the P12 or the college has suffered for that. I think it's been an enhancement in my personal opinion. One of the biggest changes has been the scope of the curriculum uh, of the college. Uh, uh, when I first started teaching, there were maybe a dozen different programs, 12, 13 different academic programs that a student could select. Uh, but today, it's far greater than that. There are programs ranging from health careers uh, through the liberal arts, through the technical areas that didn't exist then.
one of the major things that a good community college, uh, need, a good community college president needs to do right now is to advocate to Lansing that we deserve and need more public funding from the state. Now, if you look back, I believe um, back to about 2008 or 2006, we were receiving the same dollar amount of state aid that we receive today. And, and that doesn't even adjust for inflation. So essentially, we're operating with less public funding from the state than we did um, 10 and 12 years ago. A good community college president needs to explain to Lansing and legislators why we deserve more because we do produce a public service that has great value. The citizens of Dearborn founded this college in the Great Depression. Can you imagine that? When people were, 25% of the people were unemployed, uh, people were wondering where their next meal or check was going to come from. In the, in the Great Depression, they founded it. What insight, what insight, what, what courage, uh, what appreciation of education. This is Dearborn's College. And it does so many wonderful things for the people in Dearborn and for the people in the surrounding communities.